Well, today is going to be a really busy day. We had a fantastic day yesterday. We got to switch out our wood miser sawmill for the mill that we actually ordered. And uh, we'll share a little bit more of the backstory about that a little later in the video. Um, we're just really impressed with the customer service Woodmiser has provided. We did have a couple of friends who came by to help us set the mill up, which was fantastic. We got to do a few things to get that finished, but we're already having a little bit of an issue with the backhoe. It has a battery disconnect and I did not turn it off and there must be some sort of phantom load because the battery's shot. So we're gonna have to get that jumped. Doing a little bit of finishing work here on the Grizzly. Had to get some plywood to finish the side shear panels. Our fire hydrant is not doing well because we braced it using tape and a few pieces of wood. And with all the heat, the tape is sagging. So now the hydrant's kind of wanting to topple over and we're not quite ready to backfill. We've got a valve that we need to install and we're also going to install another hydrant down here at the bottom. We can't do any of that right now because we're waiting for the wrench to be made to shut the cisterns off. Anyway, we need to make sure this hydrant is braced well so that it doesn't topple over and undo all the hard work that Alyssa and I did uh, the other day. Here's the new sawmill and it's an LT15. The one they had brought before was the wide model. And the long and short story of this was, we had scheduled this workshop for folks to attend and help us set the sawmill up and have the opportunity to run the sawmill and cut a few beams and kind of help us and, and share that experience. Well, the problem was the mill was scheduled for delivery to Portland because of a trucking issue with DOT limitations. The mill didn't arrive in time. So Woodmiser, I think it was Rob and Brett in Portland, pulled a few strings, did whatever they had to do, and they got a wide model that was available. And they said, we'll bring the wide. And we said, that sounds fantastic. I mean, we feel bad having them bring that mill up here, uh, only to have us you know, use it for a couple months. But the good news is that mill is sold. So someone else is a beautiful owner of that. They got a special deal because it's a demo model. Uh, and the reason we didn't just keep the wide is because the 15, LT15 has some features and accessories that the wide doesn't have. And so while the wide model is kind of cool because you can cut really wide slabs, the features that are available for the 15 were more important to us than having the, the wide model. So we've got this now and we need to do a few more tweaks to get it finished uh, setting it up. When we first had the wide model installed or delivered, we had set these trailer pads up and they actually worked great. But the problem was, we didn't level them and I didn't do that because it dawned on me that they have adjustable legs. So I was going to go through all this effort of leveling all these pads only to realize we don't need to. Well, I have to say after having adjusted these sawmill beds using those adjustable legs, it sucks to have to work on a really uneven surface. Now, if it's like a half an inch, you know, end to end, that's not too bad, but we had three inches of difference from that end to here and another three to here. And it took longer to level the mill so that the bed sections will go together than it did to do just about everything else. So yesterday, we grabbed our new laser level and we shot a line across all of these blocks. That made putting these bed sections on go ballistically fast. We did have to adjust a leg or two, just a little tiny bit, but you don't have three inches of difference all along the bed. So we didn't do that down here because the heat was just too much. We wanted to get just get the mill head on, get a few bed sections on. So we need to use the laser level and shoot a line on these trailer pads and bring them up to roughly the height of these. And then we need to install the legs and everything on those bed sections and get all these bed sections installed. The backhoe was massively helpful yesterday. We actually picked the entire LT15 wide head up with a bed section attached and put it in the wood miser truck all in one shot and that wouldn't have been possible without a really good piece of equipment so the backhoe made us three hundred dollars yesterday that's what it would have cost us to rent a piece of equipment so massively helpful well at first i was worried that Maybe instead of a battery issue, we had a charging problem, but I'm getting a 12.9 volts across the terminal, so I think the charging system's working fine. Alright, 
all those pads are level. I have to say, there's so many tools, I'm sure you can agree with this, that you wish you had all along. But one of those is a self-leveling laser level. It needs to be verified from time to time, but for sight work like this, just getting it within a quarter of an inch is way better than having all kinds of ripples. And so far, this Bosch has been fantastic. That's the reason we didn't level this in the first place. We didn't have a laser at that time. And string leveling it would have probably worked, but it would have taken a lot of time. This overall probably took a total of a half an hour, and it will save us probably two hours leveling the beds. So I know we're gonna get a lot of use out of this tool, and it's just gonna become part of our daily routine. I think a lot of people who have a home that's already built don't understand the amount of leveling that has gone into building that house. So whenever they go to install something and they just level it based off of references, how much work has already been done. When you're out here working on raw ground, nothing is level. Sawmill, all done. Thanks for coming out and helping me with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the sun came out and it's not even it's, hot yet. It's but 9 a.m. and we're just blistering yeah, the already. Sun's, sun's no yep. joke again, so getting up at 5 a.m. doesn't work either, for the record. Um, so Alyssa's just fine tuning all the legs on there. She's looking nice and good. And I believe we actually have logs coming tomorrow morning, so right on time, folks. All right, uh, next, let's get that grizzly moved. We gotta get it into position. Over here is where Bugaboo sleeps during the day. Either right there or right there. But he's not there right now. I think he's still toughing it out in the trailer. Uh-oh, looks like I gotta connect the bucket. Fantastic, except it's freaking dusty. It's really dusty. No, it looks good so far. I like this little bin down here. I can go in there and scoop Heck it up. Yeah. I just need a place to put it. Yep. So I don't want to move it yet, but I think this will be a lot faster than what we were doing before. Yeah. So. On to the next task. What? Shower nice. and indoor activities? Maybe. Yeah, I think that was the theory. Freaking thirsty. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. Yeah. Look who's in here. He's so hot. Oh, but at least he's not. Oh, was that a silent meal? Yeah. Oh, oh he's air needing. Overall, today was super productive. And for the first time in a week, we actually got to do air conditioned stuff during the middle of the day. 
Uh, we found out that the battery on the backhoe is fine, so I've got to do some diagnostics. I left it with the auto parts store. They're going to put it on their deep charger overnight. Love grid power. Alyssa and I spent over an hour debating how to get fuel for the backhoe. We are not excited how everything we buy just ends up with us spending a thousand more dollars for everything. So we settled on four fuel cans. Total cost, I think, was about $40. This will get us $20 per fuel stop, which is good enough. That should get us a couple of days when we start gearing up. I'm pretty sure. We looked at fuel tanks, we looked at truck tanks, we looked at transfer tanks, and I just can't justify spending three to $600 on a fuel tank to fuel up the backhoe. Somebody mentioned in the comments, forgive me, I don't remember who it was, in the Woodmiser hack video where I was talking about the timber cart and figuring out how to get the most ideal timber out of a log. Somebody mentioned grabbing a piece of Lexan or uh, plexiglass and marking out the most common timber sizes. And I'm gonna make a template out of this. This should hopefully make it really easy to stick our piece of Lexan up there and make a quick judgment call about the largest beam that we can get out of that log. So I got that project for another day. Pretty sure Alyssa has dinner ready. We haven't eaten enough today. We've been at this for almost 14 hours now. So I'm gonna go eat dinner with her. Good night, backhoe. You're gonna get a fresh battery in the morning. And then we're gonna be spending a lot of time together with the new rock grizzly. What are you doing? Uh, did you have a good day today? Huh? Did you stay out of the heat pretty good? You slept in a cabin, huh? huh? Did you sleep in a cabin? Did you keep an eye on the solar? You did. This one happy cat right there.